Hey everyone, now that Hexagon is available for free, I wanted to create a quick video to show you guys the basics of getting started as well as the potential that Hexagon has to offer when used with Daz Studio um, in regards to 3D modeling, animation, posing, morphing, and rendering 3D content. Uh, but before I get started, I'll be showing you guys really quick how to download Hexagon for um, anyone who may not be familiar with the process. If you already know how to do this, feel free to skip ahead in the video. Alright, so to install Hexagon, we need to go into our product library on the DAS site. To do that, we're going to click on this blue guy in the top right corner and go to My Account. From there, we're going to go over and open up our product library. And you can either search by purchase date or name. Name is a little bit easier. And we're going to find Hexagon in this list. Once we find that, we're going to have the option to download it for Windows or for Mac. And based on what system you're running, you'll just want to click on this download button under the manual section. Alright, so once you've installed Hexagon, the first time that you open up the application, there will be a pop-up window that comes up asking you to enter in a serial number. And the serial number for Hexagon can be found on your DAS account page. And once you've entered this in, you'll be ready to go. In this tutorial, we're going to keep things pretty simple and introduce you to the basics of Hexagon. So with that in mind, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to make a coffee mug in Hexagon and then bring it into Daz Studio. To start off, we're going to go up to 3D Primitives and select the cylinder. From this screen, we can either manually set where we want the center to start, or we can hit Tab to enter in 0, 0, 0, and click Apply. From here, we're going to set the radius. I'm going to tab over and enter in 10. For the height, I'm going to tab over and enter in 20. Once we're at this screen, we're going to, holding Alt and moving our cursor up, click on the bottom of the cylinder, and then rotate up and click on the top of the cylinder as well. From here, I'm going to zoom out and enter in 10 for the points sections, and click Apply. Now we're ready to add the handle. To do this, we're going to go up to Vertex Modeling and select this tool here for Fast Extrude. Now, we are going to select faces and click on the spots for where we want the handle to be. Then I'm going to click on this blue arrow and drag out the handle just a little bit. I'm going to double click in the scene to deselect the faces and I'm just going to select them once again and you can select both at the same time by holding down shift. Once I've reselected these faces, I'm going to hold down control to get this yellow uh, sphere to pop up again. And I'm going to bring it out again, but I'm also going to angle it down slightly. So, I'm going to click, bring it out just enough while also angling it down to start on that handle. And then I'm going to double click off and we're going to select the faces one more time, hold control to get the yellow sphere, and I'm going to bring it out and down at more of an angle. That looks good. Let's double click again to deselect those faces. The reason why I'm deselecting the faces every time is so that I can continue to edit the geometry without undoing the progress we made in the previous step. Now, I could keep doing this until it starts to look more like a handle, but to save a little bit of time and sanity, I'm going to use the bridge tool to finish off the handle. To do that, I'm going to select this face here, and then rotate so I can select the opposite face. I'm holding shift to uh, select them both at the same time again. And then I'm going to click on the bridge tool. And now we have a handle. We're not quite yet done though. A coffee mug is no good if you can't put any coffee in it. So, with uh, the select faces still selected, we're going to go back to our fast extrude tool and select the top of the mug. We're going to click on this red cube and bring it in just a little bit. And I'm going to deselect the face. Let's click back on our face selection tool. Click on the lid again, and then while holding control, 
we're going to click on the blue arrow and bring it down as close to the bottom of the cup as we're comfortable with. Things are looking pretty good. As a final step, let's smooth out some of these rougher edges. We're going to click on smoothing and set the value at 3. I'm pretty happy with that, so I think at this point we're ready to export this and bring it into Daz Studio. There are a couple of ways that we could send this to Daz. Going up to File, we can save it, we can export it into another application, or we can utilize the hexagon bridge and click this button to send it directly to Daz Studio. At the time of this recording, we're making a few updates to that bridge, so unfortunately for the time being, um, we won't be able to use that bridge to send anything made in Hexagon to Daz. Um, so we're going to be using a different way. Uh, and then at the end of this video, I will include sending something from Daz Studio into Hexagon and then back. That way you guys can get an idea of how that would work and how you can use the bridge once we've made those updates. So for the time being, we are going to save this mug as an OBJ file and then import it into Daz Studio. So we're going to go up to File, Save As, and we will title this Mug. We'll keep it simple. And then we'll change it from a HXN file to an OBJ file. And we will save that. When this pops up, I'm just going to click Save. Now from Indaz Studio, let's go up to File, Import, and let's select that Mug. When this window pops up, we want to make sure that we're converting it to a hexagon. So one unit equals one centimeter. And then we are going to click accept. And here's our mug in Daz Studio. Now that the mug we've made from hexagon is in Daz Studio, let's get it ready for a render. This is a pretty quick step. We're just going to go into Surfaces, with the mug selected, All, and I'm going to change the lighting model from plastic to glossy plastic. And I'm going to change the diffuse color as well, just to give it a little bit of contrast. Then I'm going to go into Presets, Shaders, and I'm going to apply the iRay Uber Base shader. And let's see how that looks rendering an iRay by pressing Ctrl R. I'm going to wrap up the video by showing you guys that process of sending something from Daz into Hexagon and back using the bridge. So let's just send something simple over. Um, I'm just going to send a Genesis figure. With the figure selected in the scene, let's go up to File, and we're just going to click Send to Hexagon. And it'll just be sent right over. Let's go back and clear our scene. And from Hexagon, let's select the figure, File, Send to Daz Studio. And there it is. That'll wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found it helpful. And go create something awesome in Hexagon.